In 2007, when Steve Jobs unveiled the iPhone, he had a vision for the world. He saw a world where a music player, a computer, a camera, and a cellular phone can all fit in one device in your pocket. Today, your phone serves a lot more functions. It's a direct connection to your friends and family around the world. It holds your thoughts and your dreams. It's a complete collection of everything that you love. It is you. But what if I told you that this magic electric box that connects you to the rest of the world also slowly poisons your mind, making you spin in a subconscious state of brain fog while all meaning is sucked out of your life? In fact, studies have shown that phones make us more anxious, they make us more depressed, they make us lose sleep, and they even make us less intelligent. This is because it's not your charger which powers your phone, it's your attention. The more attention and time you pay to your phone, the more of your literal life is being sucked out of you. So in this video, I'm going to talk about my experience trying to escape my phone addiction and how in the process, I found a way to keep all the benefits, keep all the utility and functionality, but still live a more meaningful and intentional life. If that sounds interesting, drop a like and subscribe because it'll really help my small channel. And let's get into it. So in the last video, we talked about the three types of focus, our spotlight, starlight, and daylight, and how these have been stolen from us through the social media funnel system. I also refer to this concept of digital minimalism, which means intentionally selecting how you spend time on your phone so you can keep all the benefits without any of the harm. So in these experiments with digital minimalism over the last six months, I came across three broad categories. Your approach and which category you stick to depends on how meaningful you want your life to be and how much your phone is affecting that meaning. So the first approach is an intention-based one. This means that you can access all of the restricted apps whenever you want to, but you introduce a little bit of friction into this process so that it gives you a second to stop and think before you actually jump into the app. This can be achieved with something as simple as enabling do not disturb. This means that you don't keep seeing notifications and you only open your app when you feel like it is the right time. Another similar approach is logging out of all your social media apps and only logging in when you want to use them and then logging back out. This means that not only do you stop getting notifications, but every time you want to use your app, there's a little second that you need to take to log in during which you can think about whether it is the right time to be using this app. These methods are completely free and so easy that you can do it right now. If you're someone that only gets distracted by notifications and doesn't otherwise reach for their phone, then an intention-based approach would work perfectly well for you. But this approach still needs a lot of self-control and it doesn't break your scrolling habit. That's where the second approach comes in. The second approach is a time-based approach. This means that you can only use your social media apps for a certain time during the day, after which you're completely locked out of them. This forces you to delegate your time in social media carefully. And once you're locked out, you're forced to do other things, like live your life. So this can be achieved by the screen timer function, available both in Apple and Android devices. It lets you set a timer for each app during the day. It's very easy to set up, but it's more forcing than the do not disturb or logging out of your apps. So if you're someone that gets overwhelmed by everyone's highlights and achievements, and you spend a lot of time just scrolling through social media and feeling bad about yourself, then a time-based solution might be the appropriate one for you. It'll restrict your time on social media and gives you time to process what you see and consider whether these are actually things you wanna pursue in your life or if they're goals that are just meant for someone else. But this doesn't stop you from just overriding the timer and turning it off when you feel truly overwhelmed or you feel FOMO, which you will start to feel when you're locked out of your apps. This is where my favorite approach, the third approach, comes in. The third approach is a device-based approach. It's a full-on digital decluttering. This means that you have a specific device that either accompanies or completely replaces your primary phone a device that's designed with digital minimalism in mind. The device you choose will depend on your circumstances and what you're looking for. So if you are like me and like most other people, and you tend to automatically reach for your phone in every moment of anxiousness and overwhelm, 
then a device-based solution might be the best thing for you. This is because an overwhelmed person will just override these intention-based and time-based settings on their phone. A device-based solution means that you have no other option, your access is completely cut off. It forces you to spend time with your thoughts or spend time doing other things and actually living your life. So let's talk about the most common options that people have when choosing a device. The first is an accompanying device. This is either a secondary phone or a smartwatch. This means that when you step outside of your house, you have your main phone, which has your SIM card and everything. But within your house, you have a secondary phone that doesn't have access to any social media. Alternatively, when you're at home, you lock away your primary phone and only use your smartwatch, which you can use to answer calls and reply to texts, but you can't do much more than that. This solution is perfect for someone who already has a spare phone lying around or who already uses a smartwatch. It just takes a little bit of adding a system to your life that protects your time and energy. So having no social media access on your secondary phone means that you're less likely to get distracted when you are answering important calls and texts. The same way, you can't scroll through social media on your smartphone, which means you're less likely to get distracted again. Your secondary option is to completely replace your primary phone with a digital minimalism phone. These phones come in two broad categories. The first is a fully functioning, fully fledged Android phone, but just one that's really tiny. This means that you can't really do a lot of content consumption, but you can do everything else. The second is a phone with restricted features, something like an e-ink display that doesn't have access to a lot of apps other than calls and messages. Both of these choices have their pros and cons, so it comes down to personal preference and what you want to use your phone for. I ended up picking the tiny phone, and I'll talk about my experience with it later on in the video. So your third option is to buy a dumb phone or an old school phone that just doesn't have any internet access, something like a Nokia phone. For me, I believe this is too far and it's kind of unnecessary because it takes away a lot of the functions that makes phones convenient, things like Maps and Uber. But for you, if you're really the person that feels like your phone is completely ruining your life, then this may be a suitable option. But I would recommend that you try the other options first. So when I started this digital minimalism journey, I tried the Do Not Disturb, I tried getting the apps off my phone, I tried using my old spare phone as a secondary phone, but none of these really worked for me because in every moment of overwhelm, I just bypassed all the systems I had in place, just reinstalled the apps and just succumbed to scrolling again. This is where I made the decision to try a device-based approach. I purchased this tiny phone, the Unihertz Jelly 2, which I've been using for the last six months consistently. I chose this tiny phone, which is the size of my palm, for a lot of different reasons. I wanted access to apps like Uber and Google Maps, which just weren't available on the dumb phone or the e-ink phones. They were available on the smartwatch, but it was very cumbersome to use and just not worth it. I also wanted to be able to text quickly and seamlessly and join video calls with my friends. Something that this phone, although it's a little bit difficult to use, still does really well. It is still miles ahead in terms of texting and video calls than the e-ink phones or the dumb phones. Finally, I wanted to protect against the temptation to just reinstall my social media apps, which would be a problem if I was using my secondary phone. This phone is a full Android phone, which means it does support social media apps, but you can't use them for too long because the screen is so small that it starts hurting your eyes after a while. So when I first switched my SIM over to this tiny smartphone, there was a little bit of emptiness that I kind of felt in my life. I turned off my primary phone and put it away in a drawer. I then started to realize how much I actually reached for my phone during the day. There was absolutely nothing to do on this phone, but I still kept picking it up and looking at the wallpaper, just unlocking it and locking it again. And it's, this just shows my desperation to use my phone when I'm feeling overwhelmed. At some point, I started convincing myself that having this tiny phone was taking away from my learning time. I'm someone that likes to learn a lot as much as I can whenever possible. And I started convincing myself that when I scroll through social media, I'm actually learning a lot. I'm getting a lot out of this information. This is of course a false belief because most of that information is just entering one side of your brain and leaving the other. There was just that twitching, clawing feeling in my head that accompanied my need to keep checking my phone. 
But what surprised me was how quickly this feeling just completely disappeared. Within one week, I was no longer obsessively reaching for my phone every second of the day. I slowly started getting back into more of my hobbies, like solving the Rubik's Cube instead whenever I felt fidgety, or listening to podcasts when I felt like consuming some content that wasn't too overwhelming. This is around the time I started reading a lot more as well, and you can watch my video about how I started reading more over here. Finally, I also started sleeping better, because instead of taking my phone to bed, I was taking my Kindle to bed, which really helped me consume slow and meaningful content as I fell asleep. So this phone is still my primary phone, even today. It is completely forcing, there are no overrides, and even if you download social media, there's no way that you're going to use it obsessively. All the apps you need are still available and functional, even though there is a little bit of compromise in terms of UX just because of the really tiny screen. Of course, the keyboard on this device is going to be really tiny, but it's actually very easy to type on it. Because of swipe typing, I can almost match my typing speed on my regular device. There are a few cons with this device, the main one being the camera quality is just not up to par. Also, when you're at restaurants and are trying to read text from images, like the menu, it becomes really cumbersome. The last point is it's about $200, which is quite expensive, even though it is still more affordable than some of the other options like buying a whole secondary phone. Not to mention it's a lot cheaper than your primary phone, which is probably an iPhone or a Samsung phone. So overall, if you're willing to deal with the cons, then this palm-sized phone will completely change your life like it changed mine. While I do still sometimes just reach for my phone impulsively, I quickly realize that there's not a lot I can do on it and I put it away and I resort to actually living my life instead. This single decision gives me four plus hours back each day. It gives me time to live, it gives me time to explore the world, it gives me time to talk to you guys through these videos. It gives me back my daylight. So I hope this video helps you question your relationship with your phone. Maybe you've already turned on do not disturb or already placed a screen timer. But if you're really serious about living a meaningful life, then I really hope you consider trying a device-based solution, something like this tiny phone. I promise you that this single purchase will have a big impact on your life if you can stick to it. And if you got back four hours each day Imagine what you could accomplish. In fact, let me ask you this. What would you do with four hours back each day? Well, leave your answer in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.